You make cakes for the people you love. I think that's where my passion for pastry begins. If it's beautiful, people will be drawn in, but if it's tasty, they'll come back. Opera Eclairs. Welcome to a sinfully sweet edition of France in Focus. I'm Nadia Sharby, and this week you join us in the gourmet aisles of one of Paris's best loved department stores to talk about the French art of pastry making. While the country faces some stiff competition in the wider culinary world, patisserie remains a French preserve, and with good reason, take a look. With more than 35,000 establishments in France, French patisseries a thriving sector. It employs more than 180,000 people, and one of every eight of them is an apprentice. A young and innovative industry then, as well as a lucrative one, with a billion euros in revenue every year. Whether it's on TV or social media, the number of patisserie fans is growing. 38% of French people buy theirs in shops, while 46% prefer to make their pastries at home. From macaron to éclair, millefeuille, or the Saint-Honoré, there are more than 120 classic confections, as well as regional specialities. Patisserie dates back to the 16th century, when the first choux pastry was created by Catherine de Medici's personal chef. Some pastries are luxury items, with a collection of haute couture macarons coming in at 5,000 euros, the same price as a kilo of gold leaf-coated chocolate truffles. Another marker of their great success, an international patisserie day, as well as the Macaron's own special feast day on the 20th of March. With a combination of technical skill and creativity, the latest generations of young pastry chefs have elevated dessert making to a veritable art form. Add to that a sprinkling of TV bake-off shows, a dollop of social networking and some amazing designs, and what you're serving up is a French addiction. It's a cold day in Paris, and a queue is already forming along the Avenue de l'Opéra. Some of these people have been waiting for hours, and it's all for a piece of cake. I planned on coming here. I took the day off. Even if I need to wait three hours, that's OK. I'll wait three hours. Inside the shop is a pastry world superstar. Cédric Grolet was named the world's best pastry chef in 2018, and those with a sweet tooth can't seem to get enough. We doubled our production. We did the best we could. People are buying at an incredible speed. The first person arrived at 11.30 last night. Grolet achieved notoriety nearby at luxury hotel Le Maurice, known for its fine cuisine. I went around to the staff entrance, dropped off my resume, and started as an apprentice. In just a few years, he moved up the ranks and became head pastry chef in 2012. It's a big feat for a 34-year-old, but his success lies in turning the rules of pastry upside down and making cakes as pleasing to the eye as they are to the taste buds. Today, he is testing the latest version of one of his famous fruit. I really feel like I'm eating a grapefruit. We have the refreshing side. You like the aloe vera inside? That's exactly what I want. Once he mastered the craft, Grolet turned to artistry. His eye-catching creations have garnered one and a half million followers on Instagram. If it looks beautiful, people will be drawn in. But if it's tasty, they'll come back. As soon as he posts, business is multiplied by two or three. During opening hours, 35 pastry chefs bring Grolet's ideas to life. When he's not here, I tell myself he's behind me to push myself a bit more. While his team concentrates on today's favourites, Grolet is already working on next year's creations. For the fans who want to try their own hand at making pastry magic, star chef Christophe Michalak teaches the tricks of the trade at his masterclass in the heart of Paris. Bonjour tout le monde! Ah, comment ça va? On va faire péter la panna cotta là, rapido. Ok, alors c'est parti. C'est fou, on va passer que du bon temps. 
l'instant. Tout ce qu'on va faire va être goûté là sur place. J'ai mis du jus de citron et j'ai mélangé ma cassonade avec un peu de pectine pour avoir une, une texture un peu euh, ouais, plus soyeuse, exactement. C'est deux associations très simples, très rustiques, mais qui marchent à, à 200%. Vous versez votre panna cotta, vous laissez figer au réfrigérateur et hop. Donc lait de coco, crème, vous mettez un alcool, vous mettez un zeste d'orange si vous voulez. Vous pouvez le dresser directement sur votre assiette. Christophe Michelac, hello. Hello. Thank you very much for having us. Why do you think pastry chefs have become such rock stars here in France? Alors, First, you need to bear in mind that just 20 years ago, at the start of the noughties, pastry chefs and patisserie in general were never in the spotlight. It's really in 2004 or 2005 that I was able to take part in a few TV shows and make a name for myself. And the first pastry bake-off show was the one I created in 2007, which is when pastry slowly began to take center stage. You mentioned TV shows. Uh, how does this branding of your style and expertise actually affect the way you work? In 2010, I really wanted to put the focus on making sure that each pastry chef developed their own style. Up until then, everyone just copied each other's work. And I'm pleased to say that it's now the case. There's been real progress with the new generation of pastry chefs. But let's not forget that, above all else, our job is to pass on our expertise and recipes. And so that's what you do here with your masterclasses? Exactly. This is where I share my take on pastry. Imaginative, rock and roll, modern. I also love old recipes. Sometimes I use recipes from 10, 15, 20 years back. Recipes inspired by fellow pastry chefs. And it's good to talk about other people's work, not just your own. And why is France still the world's leading pastry nation, do you think? I think French patisserie leads the pack for the simple reason that pastry is an integral part of our culture, and we're also lucky to have many regional specialties, from Brittany's Queen Amand to Alsatian Kugelhoff. Those are incredible riches. How would you describe haute patisserie? First, it's about sparking emotion. But behind that emotion, you need to give your cake some structure and work like an architect, layering flavors, layers, and temperatures. It's a long process that, done right, allows you to serve up some truly insane pastry. The spotlight is now on, on pastry chefs here in France, and that's created a lot of vocations. What's your message for wannabe pastry rock stars? I think it's fantastic that TV has fueled so much interest in this job, because I know that when I started out, my friends were told, work at school or you'll end up like Michelac, baking cakes on a Sunday. Nowadays, everyone wants to bake like Michelac on a Sunday. So we need to remember that it's an amazing job that requires passion, but also hard work. You need to do the hard graft, pay attention to detail. It's not easy. And what you see on social media is one thing. It's great, but it's not necessarily real life. For every stunning cake, there's 70% of preparation and cleaning. And so where do you see French patisserie going from here? Well, when I was asked that question 10 years ago, I would say, I hope that French pastry making will become deeply personal, that each chef will learn to express their identity through their cakes. Now, as we enter a new decade, I think the focus is more on being mindful of the ingredients you use in a cake to ensure that it's good in every sense of the word. Christophe Michelac, thank you very much. You're welcome. Now, as we've seen, high-end patisserie often comes with the added sweetener of a tasty narrative and design. But seasonal, organic and responsibly sourced produce have only just started to feature on the menu. Let's take a look now at a few French pastry chefs with an appetite for sustainability. It's all hands on deck in the pastry kitchen of Des Gâteaux et du Pain. But amid the flurry of activity, chef Claire Damont never loses sight of a key idea for her and her team, pleasure. Taking the time to choose the fresh fruit that will go into these creations, the pleasure in tasting, peeling and cooking them, then the high standards when it comes to selecting these organic, seasonal products, the origin of the ingredients is a serious subject. It's important from an ecological point of view 
And from a taste perspective too. Produce has a very different taste based on its origin. For example, when you use the new variety apples, the flavor is very standardized, the shape is very uniform and the methods of production are too. A hands-on session with one of the bakery's signature pastries. You see, for this apple turnover, there's a week of work that goes into it. There are lots of different stages and manipulations of the pastry. Our signature is that we take our time, the time for the pastry to rest, to work with the fruit. Since these are fresh products, we have to understand how to handle them. The sort of technical attention to detail that has long been the norm in gastronomical restaurants, but less so in patisseries. Their principles shared by pastry chef Jean-François Fouché, who tries to practice what he preaches. He's testing and tweaking the new season's creations in his Parisian shop. I brought you a little of everything from the orchard so we can work on it together. Here are a couple of examples. After years working in high-end restaurants, Fouché set up his own patisserie production in Normandy, where he wanted to outlaw chemical additives from his desserts, but admits it was a risky choice. I'm not going to lie, food colorings do give a lovely effect visually. That was a risk when we started. We thought we'd lose sales. But once we'd explained it to our customers, they really liked this approach and they came back for more for that very reason. Like Claire Damon, Jean-François Fouché has strong links with local producers and is a supporter of sustainable food networks. His goal is to be 100% self-sufficient for the production of his pastries, thanks to his orchards, fields and meadows in the countryside in Normandy. Well, with that, we leave this edition. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to Frost24.